There is questions tonight about our country's coastal defence system. The South African Air Force has, wait for it, one 80-year-old plane currently in operation patrolling our seas. And despite the fact the plane is older than most of our viewers, there's no money to service the other aircraft. The Air Force's other aircraft include two 60-year-old cargo planes which can't assist with maritime patrols. Experts also say the Air Force's Roy Falk helicopter needs upgrading. For more on this, Darren Ulifier, African Defence Review Director, joins me from Amsterdam. Thank you so much for your time. This is an article that we picked up on from mybroadband.co.za. And if you consider the absolutely vast coastline we have in South Africa, it's startling to know that there's one lone plane patrolling our seas. Is it really that stark? At the moment, yes, but it doesn't have to be. So there are actually five of these aircraft in the Air Force's fleet. Uh, but at the moment, only one is currently uh, available and another one is soon to leave maintenance. Uh, most of them have been grounded for two reasons. One, they've had to have a very expensive and very time-consuming replacement of control cables as a result of a problem found with the alloy used in them. And secondly, obviously, the, the, the budget for the squadron is extremely low. It's far too low to operate the, I mean, the aircraft in the type. Um, and of course, I mean, they are very old, uh, even though they've been re-engined. So these effectively date from the Second World War in terms of that vintage. And, you know, there are C-47 Dakotas. Uh, they were upgraded with uh, new avionics and uh, modern engines in, in the 1990s. So they're a little bit more up to date than, than the, you know, um, some of the other ones that are flying out there. But nonetheless, they're exceptionally old and uh, they don't have you know, phenomenal range. So in terms of, of the t kind of aircraft for this role, they're not really ideal at all. Uh, they're in dire need of replacement. Uh, but they've been fulfilling this task since at least around uh, 1992 or so. And there just isn't enough money to replace them. Uh, I mean, at the moment, uh, the cost of acquiring proper aircraft for this task, you're looking at at least $100 million each. And with the Air Force's budget being what it is, that's completely impossible. So in an ideal world, how many aeroplanes should we have, uh, defense uh, uh, aircraft, uh, should we have patrolling our, our large coastline? And what sort of things are they meant to be looking out for? Okay, so given the size of our EEZ and the distance all the way to Prince Edward and Marion Island, as well as the fact that we technically have a treaty-bound duty to do search and rescue patrols all the way down to Antarctica and halfway to Brazil and halfway to Australia, we really need at least five to eight long-range aircraft. And I'm talking about your very type and expensive ones here and at least, I'd say, 15 to 20 um, uh, shorter range inshore patrol aircraft. Obviously, that's far beyond my budget. So that, that's not going to happen. Realistically, perhaps about five long range aircraft and maybe uh, eight to 10 short range aircraft would be a good mix. Uh, there was an attempt to buy that uh, under two projects that the Air Force had. One is called Project Saucepan, the other Project Metsi. The names are a bit strange, but they're actually generated randomly. Uh, unfortunately, again, the issue of funding, um, the, the, the budget was cut uh, each, each, each and every year. Mm. And as a result, there was never enough funding to actually buy new aircraft. Although there was a, a plan to buy new aircraft. So, you know, in a country such as ours, where we have so many needs, we, we need to make sure that children are educated, that our health system uh, in the middle of a pandemic is functioning. One can understand budget cuts in defence. Um, so is it a risk that we only have one grand old lady trying to patrol our coastline and beyond? Yeah, absolutely. You have to look at this in, in, in a holistic sense. So, for example, even though the, uh, it isn't the job of the SANDF to patrol and prevent uh, fishing, uh, that, that, that's, that, that's illegal. Nonetheless, the, the Air Force and Navy can be called upon by you know, the other departments to assist when it comes to being able to patrol and identify ships and see what they're doing. And in that sense, this, this aircraft, well, the, the, the role played by it is extremely crucial to understand what's happening in our EEZ. And right now, we are, I mean, our, our EEZ is being overfished. We have ships that are arriving illegally. It, you know, there, there's definitely an economic cost to not doing this. Obviously, yes, there is a balance to be had. Right now, I mean, the SANDF as a whole only receives about 3% of government funding. So it's already an exceptionally low proportion of what we spend compared to spending on education and healthcare and all the rest. And that's correct. That is the way it should be. 
However, there is definitely a case to be made for the Air Force at least to receive a little bit of additional funding from other departments to allow it to provide a proper service in terms of this kind of um, aerial maritime patrol uh, role. And, and, you know, as you talk about overfishing and, and the role that the, the Defence Force plays in trying to monitor that, and that, that is a real issue, and, and that is something that can affect future generations. Uh, and, and, you know, in the past, we've, we've been at fault for making, for ignoring things like maintenance at ESCOM, maintenance at municipal level, making sure that the, the stuff that doesn't seem very important right now, uh, we tend to let it slide. Um, you know, could we, could we be exposing ourselves really badly, perhaps from an environmental point of view or even a security point of view, if we don't sort this out? Absolutely. You know, the, these capabilities take decades to establish. Um, so if you were to start now, for example, to properly fund the squadron, you wouldn't see results for at least 10 years in terms of being able to actually have a, a better capability. So that's the first part. It's, it's exceptionally short-term thinking in terms of the, the, the feeling that, OK, we'll just applied funding when it's required but in truth you know but by, by then it's too late mm. and of course as you said as well we have this uh, long-term issue around um, ecology around uh, harm being done to our environment uh, around you know our, 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 our fishing uh, resources being exploited and not only that we also have questions around um, um, defense issues so you know going out towards Mozambique um, one of the requirements now is that one of these aircraft is supposed to be available to our patrol and prevent uh, the insurgency there from being able to, to resupply itself by sea. Of course, that's completely impossible. We can't have mm. one aircraft at two places at once. So, one, yeah. one final quick question. You said that, you know, obviously budgets have been cut around defence over many years. Um, but, but is there also an element of, of bad spending choices and even corruption here? There is. Um, and certainly uh, there are, you know, I, I have called out the, the, the Defence Forces senior leadership many times because of this. Uh, you know, the prime example we had just recently where the SANDF spent uh, um, you know, a few hundred million rand on Cuban medication that is completely worthless. So, yes, absolutely, this is not just a matter of external budget spending. There is definitely uh, uh, an issue of its own leadership also being to blame. And also a problem I think where Parliament hasn't been, uh, well, hasn't provided enough oversight, nor has the ministry. That being said, though, uh, in terms of the amounts needed, even if there was no corruption and um, all the corruption that's been unveiled so far was what well, didn't happen, the Defence Force still does not receive enough funding to operate uh, its current mandate. So if you look at actually what's required versus what it has, it effectively has half what it needs. Wow. So at some point we have to decide either we, we provide that funding or we accept that we just can't do certain things and then all we right. accept whatever results from that. Certainly something to ask our new Defence Minister when we get her on SA tonight. And thank you very much uh, for giving us such great insight into a fascinating story. That was Darren Ulifir, African Defence Review Director.